open with me your Bibles to the book of Jeremiah chapter 18 and want to examine the first six verses. Jeremiah chapter 18, want to examine together the first six verses. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house and there I will cause thee to hear my word. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a walk on the wheels, and the vessels that he made of clay was murdered in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, Cannot I do with you as this potter, said the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. Father, we thank you because there is power in your word. Heaven and earth will pass away, but not a jot of your word will go unfulfilled. Father, tonight we thank you because the book is already open. Lord, open our eyes to see, open our ears to hear, open our hearts to gain understanding. Lord, I pray for every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl under the influence of my voice, directly and indirectly through the virtual world, that you will speak to us in a way that you alone can. Let no one remain the same. Let this truly be a season of revival and transformation. Thank you, awesome God. We give you the glory in advance for testimonies of transformation. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the saints of God shout a big amen. amen. People of God, I'm so confident in my spirit. I don't know if you are ready. But I'm so confident in my spirit that there are people sitting down here today. Connected to this service today. The next few months of this year will mark the best seasons of your life. There are some of you that are even sitting down here right now. When you look back at your life from 2019 to date, it has been one trouble, one tragedy, one disappointment or the other. But I'm happy to announce to you, the Bible says, though weeping may endure for a night, joy comes in the morning. I'm happy to announce to you that by this conference and by the encounter with all the vessels of God, the morning of your joy has finally come. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse number 18, the Bible says, But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed in the same image from glory to glory, even as by the same Spirit. You have come to behold God in this conference. You have not come to look for a man. You have not come to look for a woman. You have not come to meet with a human being. You have come to meet with God and the destiny vessels that have been prepared for such a time as these. I declare from today is from glory to glory. Amen. So I want to talk to you on what I've simply entitled the potter and the clay. A journey of divine transformation. The potter and the clay, a journey of divine transformation. When you examine our text in Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 1 to 6, which will be uh, my text for the next few days, you will realize that the Bible talks about the fact that Jeremiah, a prophet of God, was sent by the Spirit of God into the house of the potter. To see how the potter walks on the clay and transforms an ordinary clay to become a vessel of honor and a vessel that is desired all over. And God was speaking to Jeremiah. He said, when you get to the house of the potter, I'm going to speak my word to you because I'm going to be using the potter and the clay as an analogy of my work with my people and my work in my people. And when you go there, there are some things I'm going to be unveiling to you uh, that will form the basis of, of what you will now begin to declare to the children of Israel. So people of God, when we talk about the potter and the clay, uh, God is the potter, you and I are the clay. God is the potter, you and I are the clay, uh, and the house of the potter is the house of God. 
So every time you come into the house of God, every time you come into the presence of God, you are not expected to remain the same. And I dare say, you are not permitted to remain the same. Why? Because there has never been a time, there is never a time, and there is never going to be a time when people will come in contact with God and remain the same. Therefore, I declare over somebody under the sound of my voice, by this encounter on this mountain, you will not remain the same. I say you will not remain the same. So he is the potter we are the clay. In Genesis 2 and verse number 7 Genesis 2 and verse number 7 the Bible says and the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the earth and breathed into man the breath of life and man became a living soul. You are the clay. Even from your birth, from your formation, you were formed from the clay. And then God released life. He released the air into the clay and man became a living soul. Job chapter 10 and verse number 9. Job declaring and affirming that we are the clay and he is the potter. Says you have made me as a clay in your hands. In Psalm 40 and verse number 2, the Bible reveals Psalm 40 and verse number 2 says, You brought me out of the miry clay, out of the horrible pit, and you set my feet upon the rock to stay. When God brings you out, it does not bring you out to leave you halfway. It does not bring you out to leave you stranded. When it brings you out, it's because it's taking you somewhere. And I declare over your life in the name that is above every name, my God will set you up this year. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 64 and verse number 8, the Bible says, you are the potter. We are the clay. So God is a potter and we are the clay. And if we are going to experience transformation, we must be ready to submit. We must be ready to align. We must be ready to surrender because transformation is a process. Transformation is not instantaneous. It's a process. And we must surrender to that process of transformation. The best picture of transformation that many of us need to understand that will give us clarity as to what God can do is the story of the butterfly. I'm not aware of anyone that hates the butterfly. I'm not aware of anyone that does not love the butterfly. The butterfly is beautiful. Wings, all kinds of colors. When you observe the butterfly, it's as if a painter sat down on a plain canvas and decided to use the butterfly as a template of what? Of beauty. But that butterfly that you see did not start as a butterfly. The word transformation is from the word metamorpho, uh, from where we get the word metamorphosis. And it means to be changed from one form to another. So when you see the butterfly, that is not the beginning of the story. That beautiful butterfly you see began as a egg. So there was an egg. And when you see the egg, you don't egg is going to produce you look at the egg and you are seeing the egg and you are like it's just an egg but after a while that same egg moves from just an egg and then all of a sudden it moves to the next level and the next level is what we call the lava and then when it gets to that next level a caterpillar emerges now I don't know those who love caterpillar I'm not sure people love caterpillars I'm not sure anybody loves caterpillar because see, when the egg moves to the caterpillar level, caterpillar are, you know, ugly. They are just sluggish, crawling. And you are wondering, there is no beauty in them that you should desire them. But guess what? That's not the end of the story. Transformation is a process. So in my process, I may be walking without a car. In my process, I may be single without an husband. In my process, I may be married without a child. In my process, I may be a pastor or 20 member, but what you don't understand is that even though I don't have a car, I'm going to give out cars in another two years. 
Uh, uh, what you don't understand uh, is that even though I don't have a husband, uh, I'm going to have a happy home. Uh, uh, even though I don't have a child, uh, I'm going to have children uh, and grandchildren. Why? Because you met me on the way. Guess what? Uh, when you met me at 20 members and I was going through my frustration stage in ministry and asking God, am I really called? Because every man of God goes through these different stages. Hello? There are like seven different stages you will have to go through as a minister of God. Maybe we will deserve that for morning session. Hello? Hello? There's the excitement stage. Oh, God has finally called me. He has given me a room to do ministry. Me too, I can fulfill purpose. And then all of a sudden, you practice everything you know to practice and nothing seems to be working. And then you enter confusion stage. You are confused and you are asking, am I really called? And then while you are still confused, you enter into wilderness. And then you pray and you think you have prayed for two hours and it's 12 minutes. It's wilderness. It's not as if God has abandoned you and God has forsaken you and nothing seems to be working. Then all of a sudden, you seem to have a little bit of progress. And people just gather and you're like, oh, thank God. At least members are beginning to come. You invest in them. Invest in them. When you thought they are going to stay, they all leave. And then you enter the next phase of betrayer. <laughs> Hello? But all these are part of the process. Because inside you is 20,000 members. But if you give up at 20, you bust the process. So the caterpillar is ugly, sluggish, and crawling loves the caterpillar but that's not the end of the story because the we go from one level of glory to another level of glory somebody the level of glory you have been celebrating expires tonight a new level of glory is open up to you now if you will be shout I receive it So we move from the egg to the lava, which is the caterpillar. Who will have believed <laughs> that inside that caterpillar there is a butterfly? Who will have believed? But there is a process that that caterpillar must go through in order to move to the next level. So what happens is it moves to what we call the pupa stage. And now at the pupa stage, you form what is called the crystallis. But you see, in order for the crystallis to be formed, the, the caterpillar must begin to eat. It's like a pregnant woman. You start eating. He said, why are you eating like that? I don't know. Uh, you eat in the morning. You eat in the night. And you have cravings for all kinds of stuff. Why? Because destiny is calling you. You start eating the word. You start fasting. You start praying. You start buying books. Your mates are buying books straight. You are buying Bible dictionary. Hey. Oh, yeah, but, uh, people are buying iPhone uh, and you are buying uh, concordance uh, uh, and you are going from one conference to the other. They are wondering, is she normal? Is she normal? But see, as you begin to eat, someone say eat. You are eating the word. You are eating the word. You are eating the word. All of a sudden, transformation begins to take place. And then you find yourself in a cocoon that is called the chrysalis. You see, inside that cocoon is where many of us miss it. When God shuts you out to lift you up. When everybody has to abandon you because they are not qualified for your next level. When they begin to say things about you that you are wondering, but I thought you know me. No, they don't know you. They knew you. They know the you that they knew. The you that they grew up with. But the you that is about to manifest, they can't handle it. So God has to expose them early. So that he can clear you of all the rubbles and all the hindrances to your next level. Because your next dimension, you will not walk. You will not run. You will fly. I say you will fly. And then out of Chrysalis, butterflies start showing up. Butterflies start showing up. Because when you stay alone in the wilderness where you have been left abandoned, nothing good can come out of your Nazareth. They've called you a nobody. 
They voted you out. Then you are alone with God. And then when you begin to manifest, all of a sudden, a butterfly shows up. And when the butterfly shows up, can you ever look at a butterfly and see caterpillar? Somebody is here. Within the next 45 days, God will have so transformed your life and destiny that they will not believe that 45 days ago you were where you are. Do you know that some of us, with all we thought was visible, they still believe that we are fake? Say, oh, where well, long gone? They are using something. Where do you think they see all those money? Is it not supposed to be a pastor? Where do they see all those money? They don't understand. Because the wind blew it where it listed. You hear the sound, but you don't know where it's coming from. You don't know where it's going to. Listen to me. From today, I welcome you to the mystery dimension of life. Your life and your progress will become a mystery. In the name of Jesus. Mysterious promotion. Mysterious advancement. Mysterious lifting. Mysterious prosperity. Mysterious anointing. Mysterious power. Mysterious glory. In the name of Jesus. Everybody be shot about. So transformation. Process. Hello? Is what? So he said, go to the house of the potter. And I'm going to take you through that process. So people of God, what do we see? For that butterfly to come, there was a process. Don't despise the process on the way to the promise. Don't despise the process on the way to the promise. Let me go deeper. Don't forget in darkness what God told you in the light. You see, the reason why God speaks to you and prophesies and gives you promises is because those promises, those prophecies are the light that has been given to you for you to hold on to when the darkness comes. So that no matter what you go through, you know, no, he told me. He told me, he told me. And you hold on to his word, regardless of what you see around him. Even if you cannot trace him, trust him. But you know what many of us have done? When the troubles of life come, we allow the troubles and the wind to dictate to us. Peter, you said, if you are the one, bid me come. And in order to prove to you that he is the one, he said, come. Peter, you obey. First step, second step, third step. You did not sink. You obey. You responded and you were triumphant. Then the wind came. Then the storm came. And the Bible says, and when Peter saw the wind, not feel the wind, not hear the wind, saw the wind. To see the wind, you must take your eyes off Jesus. Because you can't be seeing Jesus and seeing wind at the same time. When he took his eyes off Jesus, because of Corona, because of lockdown, because of recession, because of economic climate, because of news, bad news. When he took his eyes off, the Bible says, he began to sink. But he quickly retraced his step. Jesus! Have mercy on me! And the very minute he looked again, he rose again. Guess what? And the Bible says, they walked back to the boat. Who is the day? Both of them. So question, Jesus did not carry him. When he put his face on Jesus, when they were going back, they were walking back. 
let me tell you something. Peter was one of the most powerful fishermen of his days. Fishermen and swimming goes together. When he looked at the wind, he began to sink. He forgot he could swim. Listen to me. When you take your eyes off Jesus, even that which you have shall be taken away. For to him that has, more shall be given. To him that has not. If you stop there, error. He said, to him that has not, even that which he has, you are the one that says you have not. But there is still something you have that can still be taken. <laughs> so they walk back. Because you should never forget in darkness what God told you in the light. John the Baptist said, Behold Christ, the Son of the living God. And people follow Jesus. But when John the Baptist found himself in trouble, he forgot what he has been preaching. He forgot what he has been preaching. He forgot what he has been preaching. Listen, read your Bible. On many occasions, they tried to capture John. They could not capture him because he was under covering. Because he was staying connected. But guess what? The very minute he forgot where he was coming from. You know what happened to John? He sent a message to Jesus. He said, go and ask him, are you the one? Or should we look for another? Error. And she said, la. Error. Eh? Did Jesus answer the question? No. When they came, he ignored them. He continued to do miracles. He continued to fulfill the prophecy of John. And when it was true, he said, hey, now, guys, who did he say? Go and tell John, the blind see, the lame walk, the dead, have their dead restored back to them. The poor, ask the gospel preached to them. So go and tell John, what you have seen. And when they were going, he said to the people, he said, before now, of all people born, there was none as great as John. But from today, from today, the question has changed. That night, someone said that night, there was a party. And permission was granted in the realm of the spirit by the disconnection of John the Baptist. And one small Egbere Ogbanje Marine Spirit Gay dance, a celestial dance. And the king said, Anything you want out to have of the kingdom. And she conspired with her witchcraft mother. Ah, in the name that is above every name. Every witchcraft conspiracy. The Bible said, Don't ask John to hands. The wicked will not go and punish. Every gang up against your destiny expires on this mountain. They say, what do you want to have for me? The mother said, ask for the head of John the Baptist. He lost his head. Because he lost his conviction. He lost his testimony. So people of God, in this opening night, I want to tell you, welcome to the mountain of transformation. Tomorrow night, we'll move to the next level. And then the next few days, I'm going to show you the eight different steps that the clay must go through. From the point it is dog up to the point when it becomes a worthy vessel of honor. And we're going to see a typology of the journey that you and I have been going through. But I'm happy to announce to you, welcome to the best season of your life. Welcome to the next chapter of your life. Welcome to the season of the manifestation of a brand new you.